welcome to mother care it's always a pleasure and privilege bringing the show to you every single week and it gladdens my heart knowing that you're out there and you hopefully be with us from now to the very end of the show my name is marian and i am happy to be here okay today's topic is on drugs not hard drugs but drugs and it's all about those that are over the counter or those that are prescribed we'll go into details much later on the show Welcome back. So you have some information, you have some information and now you know where you're guilty. But you know, let's go to the streets. Moms out there, I think when moms were created or, you know, we all have a gene in, inside us where we are all doctors, nurses and pharmacists just inside waiting to express ourselves. Let's go to the, the real moms out there who have these real issues. Do they do these things without the doctor and the pharmacist help? Let's find out from them. When you just go to buy without a doctor's prescription, which the medical personnel kick against because when you do that, you may eventually buy fake drugs, which may hamper your health and even at the end may lead to deaths. Over the counter, you're taking drugs from, you're going to the random chemist to get the drugs. Go to the chemist to patronize them for the drugs that he wants to make use of. Prescription drugs, it means that that could have been up, that could have happened after a doctor has given you a kind of advice. Maybe you have gone through a particular test depending on what is wrong with the patient. So that is when you have a prescription from a medical doctor which you can actually go and purchase and you which is much more safer than self-medication then across the counter is welcome back it's still mother care and we're talking about over-the-counter drugs and prescription drugs what's the difference what should i be able to do myself and since i don't have the answers i've got my pharmacist in the house i will be talking to aisha amidi it's great to have you back on the show my pleasure okay so first of all let's have the difference what is over-the-counter and prescription drugs okay over-the-counter drugs acronym for otcs you just hear them say otcs are actually mm -hmm. drugs that you don't need a, um just take without the advice of either a doctor, a nurse, or a okay. pharmacist. You know, you just do it out of your own mm -hmm. maybe self knowledge okay. or maybe from advertisements you've seen. Same. While um, prescription drugs are actually drugs that you get from a recognized personnel or a pharmacist and okay. sometimes nurses. Okay. In Nigeria, here they may just say doctors, yes, but mm -hmm. other countries there are nurses that prescribe, there prescribe. are pharmacists that also. And you know prescribe and for community pharmacists you also have pharmacists that that also prescribe so okay. that's basically the difference that's basically the difference i know um once or twice i've had i've have asked for a drug and i've had i've had a pharmacist say oh you need a doctor to prescribe this drug is is that it, that falls under the prescription drugs yes there are some drugs like analgesics they are okay. over-the-counter drugs but when it comes to opioid analgesics, then it depends on the dosage in ah, which it comes, okay. you will need a prescription for that. There are drugs like um, the benzodiazepines, you need a prescription for that. A regular bromazepam, you find it in the Lexotan, you find yeah. it in the diazepam, those prescriptions you actually need a prescription sure. from a doctor. Okay. You also even need, for a pharmacist, before a pharmacist dispenses that drug, mm. you also need to sign the poison book. So that's basically it. Okay, so for the prescription drugs, let me go back to, okay, so I don't have a doctor's prescription. Are there some that the pharmacist on duty can actually let me have? Can the pharmacist prescribe for me? For like I said office? earlier, yes. If you walk into a community pharmacist, uh, a community, a community pharm pharmacist? A you community pharmacist that? is actually a pharmacist whose approach is just taking care of the community that he or she okay. resides in. That's basically hospital pharmacists are pharmacists oh, that work in the hospital, okay. uh, pharmaceutical pharmacists, pharmacists that work in the pharmaceutical industry. So the one in my neighborhood is a community pharmacist. Community pharmacist, okay, basically, okay. she's always there. He or she's always there for you. Okay, okay. So that's particularly what they do. They have clinical skills to actually take care of things. Okay. And once they cannot handle it, they will also do referrals to either doctors, gynecologists, okay. like that. They have a team of doctors they also work with. Oh, okay, really? Yeah. Okay. Every community pharmacist has that. 
There are certain things you can't handle, you're not a doctor. Mm. You will always make a referral for, so that your patient can actually get the best of care. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to them being able to um, give me... Prescribe, yeah. yeah. Like I said, you could walk into a pharmacy, an ideal come into pharmacist, and then I ask you, you have um, issues. I can actually write a prescription for you okay. based on... I have provided you must have provided information. I will have asked, who are you? How old are you? Are okay. you pregnant? Mm. Are you breastfeeding? And all of that. Mm. Then I could have also asked for your family history, what medications you have used before. Okay. You know, there's also even if I make a prescription, based on what you've told me, I will be able to make a prescription. Let's take for example okay. malaria. Mm. Family history, do you react to any drugs? Let's know because there are different classes of anti malaria drugs. Mm. They are different um, for different ages. There are also mm. people who react. Let's take, for example, the sulfonamides. Some people react to sulfur containing drugs. So okay. if I ask you that you react to a sulfur containing drug, there are certain drugs I won't want to give you, okay. like coarinate. I won't want to include that in your prescription. So if you're pregnant, there are certain drugs I won't want to also give you because it's not safe okay. because you're a pregnant woman. So Stops like that mm -hmm. happen in a community pharmacy, then I can give you a prescription. I can also as well dispense. I will tell you, I can also provide therapeutic advice mm -hmm. on how you can use that medication, when to use, like, is it every six, six hours? Is it every eight, eight hourly? Mm -hmm. And also how to take the drug, either with food, after food, two hours after food, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's something you can actually get in a community pharmacy set. Okay, what, what if I have... Um Say something that comes often, maybe once, not like malaria, maybe a kind of backache or a migraine or, or something like that. And I've had a prescription from a doctor before, which I've used. I've taken, can I, if I find myself in that situation again, use that same? A lot of people do that. Yeah. And like I said, I've, we've mentioned that mm. before. It's also part of self-medication oh, okay you may have headache now and it occurred like three years ago mm. and you felt the same medication that was given to you then mm. will still suffice for okay. now but it's ideal that you ask okay outside the benefits it's ideal that you always ask because it could be a different medical condition known as ma masking okay. itself okay. Yes. so i don't use the same prescription yeah okay what about some drugs that if normally i came to buy from the pharmacy the pharmacist tells me oh i need um a doctor's, um, uh, whatever. Can the pharmacist prescribe that drug for me? If I say, well, I couldn't go to the doctor, but this is... The, no. no. Okay. A prescription is actually like a, 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 a written instruction from a doctor okay. to a dispenser. Okay. And that dispenser can actually be a pharmacist or a nurse mm. or mm. a pharmacy technician. Okay. The, the doctor will have considered so many things before he made ah, okay. that prescription. Like I said, in Nigeria here, you find some who just bring lots of papers. A paper that does not really contain an ideal prescription should be very legible mm. yes it should be clear mm. the doctor should say what he really wants clearly nobody has to be going around you find someone going around with prescription from one pharmacy to, to another other, yeah. trying to find out what it is that is written, it's written on it. in fact doctors have bad very bad hand yes i'm sorry why. i'm apologizing <laughs> they really have bad, bad handwriting you find out you're trying so hard to find to out read, who, yes. yes to read the prescription the ideal thing is that your prescription should be very legible. Mm. So it should have the name of the patient. So you should be able to say if the child, okay. if the person is a female or a male, male. one, your age, are you a child or an adult, okay. your home address, your phone number, then the doctor should be able to sign. The dosages of the drug, let's take for example, the doctor is trying to dispense amoxicillin. He should be able to tell us, is it syrup? Is it capsules? Ah, okay. Is it injection? Mm. So that we'll, we'll know what we want to dispense. Mm. Then he should also you know, sign, and then his hand right, uh, his phone number could be there. Okay. Because sometimes they are humans. Mm. They could actually make mistakes. A doctor is supposed to consult with uh, 20 or 60 patients in a mm. day, and in a bit in writing, he will mm. just maybe make a mistake. Sometimes when those things are there, especially his number, mm. we can actually call him. Okay. Hello, doc, we have a prescription here. Um, so, so, so patient, we can mention a name, and mm. then, you know, what do you think? And he will actually tell us, okay, 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 okay. Yes. You can, you know. Ah. Because the truth is, the legality, if something happens, goes wrong with a prescription. Mm. The burden, the greatest burden lies on the pharmacy. pharmacies. Ah. The ideal thing, yes. Except in certain conditions, you really want a particular brown. Then let's say, for example, amoxicillin clavulanic, you cannot write in bracket, argumentin. Okay. Then we will know that you are certain it is argumentin you want. Okay. But ideally, so that you don't promote one brand over, over the, the other. other. A generic name. Let's take, for example, you have a patient, and during the course of 
talking to the patient, you asked during family history, mm. you asked her occupation, you asked, and she told you she's a market woman selling tomatoes. And then you're prescribing argumenting. Mm. Argumenting actually costs so much. Mm. It will take her three, four weeks, mm. maybe three months mm. before she actually can afford that, yeah, that argumenting. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if you had just written amoxicillin clavulanic and she walked into the pharmacy, Madam, I don't have money mm -hmm. to buy this, so, but these are the brands we have. We will just oh, give her a brand that suits. Okay. That will still be effective. Okay. Because that happens sometimes. And, and I know for the patient, for us, you really want, you know, when the, the, yes. you know, pharmacists will say, no, it consists of The pharmacists will always tell you, there's, there, um, drugs have different molecules. Sometimes yeah. they have different isomers of different drugs. But yes, sometimes you can substitute. But mm. a doctor who doesn't want you to substitute will actually we'll tell really you, indicate. don't substitute. Okay. I really like talking to you, Aisha, I tell you. <laughs> I, I feel like just carrying you with me. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the education today and mm -hmm. all the advice and all the tips. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. I actually like the idea of a doctor writing his uh, phone number. I, you know, it never occurred to me, but it now makes a lot of sense because I've been, I've been one of those people that's gone to three, four pharmacy looking for a particular brand because because when they tell me, you know, it's the same. I'm like, oh, doctor didn't write it, so please, mm. I move, I move, I move, I move. So this 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 makes sense. Thank you um, for sharing with us and You're educating welcome. us. Okay, so I've been talking to Aisha Midi, becoming one of my favorite right now. <laughs> We'll take a short break. When we come back, mm, Dr. Clemens, you know you're always my favorite. He will be back and he will be talking uh, to you and answering all your questions, taking all your inquiries and giving you all the answers that you need. It's Mother Care. Please stay with us. Hello, viewers. Welcome to this week's episode of Moment with Doctor. My name is Dr. Clement. I'm the one answering your questions. Just as, as a quick reminder, please remember to put your name and location. That is to say your state where you are sending the question in from. It helps us to answer your questions even better. This week, before we go into the questions, we want to quickly talk about something that affects all of us, especially the youths. Imagine that you have worked for 31 days in a week and you take your money to buy a scissors, only to get home and stab yourself with it. Uh, this is what has happened in, this, in, few, in th this very month. We saw it on the news that we have poisoned our minds with codeine. This is something that is meant to cure a problem, but we use it to create problems. My dear viewers, ensure that you do not use your money to buy what will cause problems for you. These drugs were made for something and let them be used for such. So it is time for us now to take the very first question on this episode. And this question is coming from all the way from Ogun State. And it's from Fumilayo Belu. And the question says, I'm looking for fruit of the womb. And I went for a scan and was told I have PID, that is pelvic inflammatory disease. And I did HVS, high vaginal swab. The results yield heavy growth species. You did not state whether it was um, staph aureus, what was yielded, but we assume something was yielded. So I was prescribed with some drug. After some weeks, I was feeling heavy pain in my pelvic and I feel like the service has shifted down. Now my hand is easy to touch my service with great pains. What causes it? Because I was afraid, seriously, what should I do? Very good question. First, you did not tell us which of the organisms that was cultured in that high vaginal swab that you did. But whatever was um, cultured, you did not have to state who prescribed the drugs. Because PID, as we know, it's uh, an infection that affects all the organs of the female reproductive system. The ovaries could be affected, the tubes could be affected, and the cervix can also be affected. Now, if someone is just prescribing you drugs, that person is not a doctor, he may not give you the drug that will cover all these various organs that have been mentioned. You also mentioned that the service, you could feel your service via the vagina. It's implied that you could have, you, know, you are having a, a, a cervical prolapse, which is not too good. You need to see a doctor because if it is a prolapse, actually, you may need a surgery to restore that service to its position. Whether you can get pregnant with that, yes, you could get pregnant with that. But 
the more, when the pregnancy becomes advanced, the cervix will push out more and vaginal delivery may be impossible. So the advice is with all of this, you need to see your doctor as quickly as possible. I know that Fumilayo, you will do that and we appreciate the fact that you sent your location and your name. We want others to copy from that. So I believe that that um, answer suffice for Fumilayo. I will now go to the second question. This one is from Owo Chooks. He's sending this message from Enugun State and he wants to know about meningitis, antivirus drugs for vaccination and where to locate it. I assume that you're talking about how to get meningitis vaccines. Yeah, they are not part of the national uh, vaccines that the government gives for free. You need to make an order. You could see it in health centers, you could see it in some general hospitals, you could see it in teaching hospitals or some other uh, private hospitals where you make an order and they will get it to you. Uh, if one has meningitis, as you're asking here, you, there are no specific treatment. It is treated symptomatically. Depends on what the person presents with. But you are talking about prevention. Prevention, you take the vaccine so that um, when one is exposed, he will not have these complications that comes along with somebody or someone who is not properly immunized. The last question for this episode is, please, is it possible for one to get pregnant while menstruating? And is it possible to carry such pregnancy for 10 months? Please, I need answers. My life depends on it. Well, uh, I don't know why you said your life depends on it and your name is not here, your location is not here. Please, next time, make sure you have your location and your name. The answer to that question is yes and no. Why yes? Because if you have a period that is between 28 days and 30 days, you may not be pregnant if you are menstruating and you're having sex. But first, most women will not engage in sex when they are uh, having their menses. Uh, it's, it's not clean, it's not hygienic, but that is strictly personal. It is also a yes possibility because if your period is short, between 21 days and 24 days, you could have a shorter period and you would have had sex uh, a few days before your menses and the eggs are still there, the sperm can stay for three to five days, the eggs can last as long as that, and you have sex, you could be pregnant. And you may think it is a recent one you had. But however, it is period dependent. But the possibility is there, but it's not something that is very common. So if you are pregnant as a result of that, you can still carry that pregnancy to time. That is your concern. And note too that some women get pregnant, they still see their period, they don't know they are already pregnant. So it could be any of these, but in all, you can still carry that pregnancy to the term and you have a healthy baby. So that is the much questions we can provide answers to. And remember that if you want your questions to be answered, your name, your location is very important to us. It will help us know which of the questions we should pick for a particular week. Until then, see you next week as we pick other questions to answer. Well, that's been the show today. We do hope you had a lot of information and education on the program today. Keep your questions and comments and suggestions coming in. We're always happy to hear from you. And thank you so much for being with us every week, every time. It is just a pleasure knowing that you're out there. To every mom out there, well done. Some days we just need a tap on the shoulder. You guys are doing a good job. And we always say, being a mom, best job in the world. Thanks for watching.